behind the jib cam. Nice work. All right, good. Uh, welcome back to the Jason Show. We are talking St. Patrick's Day because it is just a week away, and that means it is time for some good Irish soda bread. Irish soda bread. I, I don't there have an Irish go. accent whatsoever. <laughs> Joining us with her recipe for soda bread, the host of the weekly dish, Miss Stephanie Hansen. Hello, Miss Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Okay, are you ready to make soda bread? Yeah, I'm so ready. I just want to say first and foremost, I never actually get to talk to you, so I'm like really excited to just <laughs> say hi and I miss you. Hi, Kendall. I know your braid the other day was real cute that you were sporting. Thank you. Oh, I was, yeah, I was, it was good. I was, I was going with braid day on Tuesdays. Okay, <laughs> first off, um, tell me what is soda bread because I had never heard of it until quite recently. Oh, I'm so glad. Soda bread is an unleavened bread. It's leavened without yeast or out without sourdough. You just use baking powder and it is an Irish bread that was pretty in convenient to make and pretty inexpensive. Of course, we're going to make it with a little bit of sugar and I've got my recipe online, but what I like about it is I'm not a fancy baker. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to put sugar, baking powder, soda, salt, and unsalted butter and buttermilk together. And then you just kind of mix it up and you don't have to deal with like yeast rising and all of those other things that make bread so scary for people. Yeah, I was gonna say, so, we have the recipe up right now on the screen. Those are all very basic ingredients that most of us have in our home. Maybe not the buttermilk, but the rest is there ready to go. Mm -hmm. Super easy, and you know you can make buttermilk with just milk with a little bit of white vinegar added, but that's probably a segment really? for another day. It is. Look at this beautiful Kerrygold butter, Irish butter. It has a higher fat content. Okay. And I don't know if you can see the loaf I made here. It is just like, it's so gorgeous. And this is so easy to do. It's kind of fun to do with kids too. Um, Steph, can I ask, do you have to have Irish butter specifically then? And it looked like you were, in little cubes, so not necessarily warm, yes. but room temperature? Room temperature butter, or not room temperature, it's refrigerated. I okay. took it out and I cut it into cubes because we're gonna treat it like pastry dough where you want big clumps of butter. Okay. So oh. fancy people have a pastry cutter. I use a mashed potato <laughs> masher. Or yeah, girl. Totally candid. Sometimes I just use my hands. So you're gonna... We appreciate the realness. Yeah, totally. In fact, I'm just gonna, it's gonna be faster if I just do it with my hands. So you just mix up and you like make the butter into like pea sized clumps with your mix here, right? Okay. So just like you would if you were making a pie and no Kendall, you do not need Irish butter, but since it is St. Patrick's day that we're celebrating and the Irish butter is so amazing, why not? Why not? Okay. So we get this all mixed in. We're gonna just stir in our buttermilk and then we're using this fancy little thing. They call it a dough scraper. Oh. It's not really fancy, but it just allows you to mix it up a little bit. Can you get that anywhere if you don't have one of those? You can. You okay. can even find them at like Cub Foods and just oh. any grocery store now in the kitchen implement area. Okay. Because so many people are making sourdough bread, they have like all kinds of helps and little implements that you can use for making bread in your regular grocery store now. Interesting. So okay, obviously the so, recipe is pretty simple, but it looks like the process too doesn't require a ton of knowledge of no, baking. Okay. Not at all. So you're just basically I've mixed all the stuff up and now I'm going to put this big hunk <laughs> on my board here and I'm going to make it so that it's like a dough and I'm just going to get it so it comes together. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm doing it with my hands, which yeah. I don't know. If you guys watch fancy people, they do cook with their hands a lot. It's true. They did <laughs> Especially that when you're making Julia. dough. Yeah, I yeah mean, it's so I, much easier. I would, I would assume so. I mean, it, if it gets really sticky, do you do that trick where you get your hands a little bit wet? Does that help with, I've never made bread, but I know with yeah. baking, sometimes it helps. It does, Kendall. See, look at you cooking Learning. so much. <laughs> All she right, really so pays I'm attention. just kind of getting this to come together, just like you, put it in a ball and it doesn't have to be fancy. It literally just has to come into a ball. Okay. I'm putting a little bit of flour on here so that it's a little less wet, but see how it's coming together. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna shape it just a tiny bit so that it's like, again, just a little ball. Does it have to be and then springy? We're gonna... No, okay. none of that applies to soda bread. It's so much easier than regular dough that you're working with or 
if you're doing sourdough or yeast. Okay. It's just, look, it's super, it's just like almost like Play-Doh when you were a kid that you would make it with flour and oh, yeah. water. Do you need a special right, pan so for baking it or does it matter? You need your cast iron. Oh, okay. Or you can use like a Dutch oven or you can use any kind of a baking pot. I like to use the cast iron because it gives it this nice shape here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so literally we're just patting it into a little ball. I'm just gonna make sure that my doughs all come together. I've got all these chunks of butter. You can even see them. Mm. And I'm gonna put it in there. Okay, so here uh -huh. we go, we've got the round. Okay. Now you want it to look pretty and fancy, so you can cut it in an X. Oh, oh look at that trick. Is that really just for looks? <laughs> Yes, and it lets a little bit of the steam out of the bread. Okay. So you get a really good crispy crust. So literally that's it. Love the tricks. Okay. That is how you make soda bread. How long and it, it comes for? out looking beautiful like that one. Can you see it? Oh yeah. yeah. And so, sorry, I mean, how long does that cook for, Steph? And how hot do you need to put it? 30 that in minutes there? Okay. at 375. And I cooked mine a little bit longer. I when I took it out, it looked a little soft on the top, so I added about four more minutes. But super easy. It's great to serve with like an Irish stew or with soup. It's just super delicious. How about, and right now, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna add, I, I'm obsessed with toast. Does it make good toast? Like just toast yes, and butter. Yes, it totally makes good toast. Okay, whew. <laughs> yes, with peanut butter or with oh. jam. And I think you wanna eat it. For me, it doesn't last as long as other bread because there's just not as much stuff in it in terms of preservatives. Sure. So you wanna eat it in like two or three days. But honestly, I I made soda bread before I ever made any other kind of bread because I just was intimidated by yeast and by dough. And it's super, super easy. Starter bread, mm -hmm. I like it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and look at these beautiful loaves that uh, Bakersfield Flour and Bread, they're doing a fundraiser for Irish Fest. So you can get these $6 loaves and $2 from each loaf goes to Irish Fest. You can get them at Irish on Grand or Kieran's Kitchen and they're made with that beautiful Baker's Flour bread. Perfect. Or Blaker's Flour flour. Right, awesome. Well, we're gonna talk more about that. More with Stephanie Hansen yes. when we come right back after this break. Again, she's gonna let us know the way to get some of the best St. Patrick's Day eats. That's coming up. Miss Stephanie Hansen talking all about St. Patrick's Day and some local restaurants that have some fun things planned. Did you get a chance to wash your hands, stuff? I know that stuff was really <laughs> You guys, I washed my hands. I put my bread in so that when my husband comes home from his appointment, he'll have fresh bread. Oh, wow. Lucky man. Wife of the year. Okay, your first yeah. spot for St. Patty's Day is one spot that is my favorite every year for St. Patrick's. Patrick McGovern's in St. Paul. Yeah, Patrick McGovern's is kind of the standard bearer. They are the place that people think of when it comes to eating in St. Paul for Irish food. They've got a great Reuben. And I want people to try their Irish mac and cheese. It's got a Ooh. Guinness cheese sauce that's creamy, and then it's got breadcrumbs on the top. And that's something a little bit different from your corned beef and cabbage that they have every day. Wait, Guinness cheese? Guinness cheese sauce. So like think beer cheese, beer cheese yeah. sauce on macaroni and cheese. It's like a Jamelli noodle that they use with breadcrumbs. Oh my word. Is my that always on their menu or is this like a special St. Yes. Patrick's Day thing? Okay. No, it is always on the menu. You just changed my life. Sorry. Go ahead, I Shane. Know. We know so... where we're going after the show. All right. <laughs> next up, this makes obvious sense too. Shamrocks in St. Paul. Yeah. Shamrocks is also in St. Paul, a great pub. They roast their corned beef every day. And they have a great Reuben, but they have something called Irish fries, which are waffle fries that have corned beef and sauerkraut and Swiss cheese on them. And then it's got like a Thousand Island drizzle. And they also have Reuben rolls, which are like an egg roll that's stuffed with corned beef and cabbage. And then they serve it with the Thousand Island dipping sauce. So that's, again, something just a little bit different. Oh, and they have the best wings there. They call them their pot of gold wings. And you can get a dry rub Cajun, which is my favorite. Ooh, yummy. All right, um, staying in St. Paul, Emmett's Public House. Okay, Emmett's is right next to Dixie's, which has been there for a real long time on Grand Avenue. Mm -hmm. And they have corned beef every day. They've got a dinner entree that's got a mustard crusted corned beef and they serve it with Brussels sprouts. 
and potatoes and carrots. It's very delicious. But they've also got a corned beef slider, which is a little bit different take on it with Jameson mustard, hot pepper cheese, and it's just really delicious on a delicious roll. I am getting very hungry listening to this segment. We're going to keep it going, though. Uh, moving to Minneapolis now, Morrissey's. Okay, Morrissey's is in Uptown, and they have a traditional corned beef entree, but they also have a corned beef hash that you can have with the Bloody Mary, and they also do a delicious sandwich that has pickled onions, whole grain mustard, and it's on ciabatta bread, which really soaks up that mustard and the delicious juices from the corned beef. It's a very delicious sandwich. Mm, and Minneapolis also, Merlin's Rest. Okay, this place is really funny. It is the largest selection of single malt scotches and Irish whiskeys in Minnesota. So they're a perfect place for St. Patrick's Day. They've got a beefy Irish stew with potatoes and carrots and rutabagas, but they've also got a burger that has a bacon jam that's made with whiskey, a single malt whiskey. And then it's got an ale cheese, wow. Kendall, ale cheese. I know I had you at cheese. <laughs> More ale cheese? Yes, and it's just, it's a delicious Irish take on a super great burger. We have had the owners of Merlin's on the show before, and they are fantastic, so good people Super too. nice people. Yes. Okay, let's talk Red Cow, sticking in Minneapolis. Well, and okay. Edina Red and Cow. St. Paul. <laughs> okay, Red Cow is going to do, sorry, I had to answer my phone. They're doing um, <laughs> shamrock shakes. So like important. A Jameson, yeah, sorry. A boozy Jameson filled shamrock shake. So oh it's got brownie bits in it, and it's got a little cream de mint. And they have it at all the Red Cow locations. And it just looks, I'm so glad you played that video because that's how I found out about it. It is so delicious. Um, Shamrock Shake Lovers Unite. This is a way to do it the boozy way. It always, always has the best information. Thank you, Miss Stephanie Hansen. Thank oh, you. thanks, you guys. Happy I look St. forward Patty's to seeing Day. you soon. Yes, me too, me too. All right, for more information, just head over to stephaniesdish.com. She'll have all of this info right there. So many good ideas. Still ahead, will he or won't he? Kendall takes her dog Harvey to a local dog tank where they're gonna train dogs to jump in pools. We're gonna see if Harvey can break a record. I can't wait for this. We'll show you what happens when we come back. We'll see. He's a star.